John Maxwell says, everyone communicates, but few connect. At the end of the day, communication is all about connecting. Yet for some of us, communication is just about informing. Communication is just about dumping information. Communication is just about telling people what they should believe. That's not how to communicate, and you are not going to win in your relationships if you communicate that way. That's why Speak With People has created a seven-part mini course called how to communicate. It is the principles of true connection. And we'll take you through seven videos where we'll help you unpack how you can become an incredible communicator and how you can win in your relationships. Go to speakwithpeople.com slash how to communicate and buy the course today. Welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Rates. I'll be your host. And this podcast exists to help you improve your communication skills. Whether you communicate one-on-one to a team from a stage or from behind a screen, we know that when we improve our communication skills as leaders, it exponentially changes everything. It improves our relationships, it improves our leadership skills, and it improves our business skills. So let's get ready to dive into this next episode. Welcome to week two of this How to Communicate series. How to, how to communicate. I know it sounds, I don't know, even as I'm saying it, it sounds uh, kind of funny because I'm, you know, it's like, well, how to breathe? You just breathe, right? It's, it's, it's to communicate. It's how to communicate. But the reality is, is that many of us get into so much trouble with our words, so much trouble with our communication. We bring on so much pain and so much anxiety and stress and pressure because of our uh, ineffective or unhealthy communication skills or because we just refuse to communicate in a healthy way. It's just outstanding to me. Well, I'm so glad that you're joining us for this second week of the series. The first week, we, we started diving into communication's dirty little secret, right? The dirty little secret is if you keep turning up the unhealthy communication, eventually people are gonna listen to you. You probably will get your way. Your employees will jump right to it and do what they're told to do, but it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost because you are now communicating in an unhealthy way, which means that you are speaking at people. When you speak at people, you welcome, you become a vampire. You suck the life out of them. Instead of being an oxygen tank where you want to breathe life into people. And so that's the difference, right? Uh, Sunday, I'll hop on a plane. I've been on hundreds of planes. Uh, the attendants will at some point do the safety uh, talk and they'll talk about how if there is a loss in pressure, the, the oxygen mass will fall from the ceiling. And what do you do? You don't put on your neighbors first. You put on yours first. So then you can help your neighbor. That's what we should be able to do. We, we should be able to be healthy in our inner world so then we can breathe life into the people, the teammates, the employees, the family members, our spouses, uh, our friends around us with words of encouragement, joy uh, that uplift people, that breathe life into them. So the second week, we are going to give you what the speaking with people list looks like. Uh, because we could spend a lot of time on speaking at. And if you go to our YouTube channel, just search YouTube for Speak With People. There's actually a video where we talk about the speaking at and, and what it really does. But we're, we're going to dive into this. And so here's my encouragement to you. A great author, Marcus Buckingham, he said this, remember, what you focus on expands, results will follow. So... <laughs> In this second part of the how to communicate, let's focus on speaking with people. Because when you improve your communication skills, you will deepen your connections. You'll breathe life into people. You will be leading and communicating from a healthy place and you will be lifting others up and breathing life into them. It's just that powerful. Let me just say a word though before we hop into the, the, the actual list of speaking with people and speaking uh, at them. There's lots of stuff in the communication world about effective communication. I mean, raise your hand, right? I mean, you're probably driving or you're working out or you're doing something. Uh, but raise your hand if, you, if you've ever thought to yourself, I want to be an effective communicator. Or if your boss has asked you to sit through an effective communication training seminar. Or, you know, you, you read a book on effective communication. We hear it all the time, especially as leaders. We want to be effective. We want to be effective. 
lack of communication, it just breeds mistrust. And so if you really care for people, if you want to breathe life into them, if you want to be an oxygen tank and not a vampire, you, you've got to, yes, be effective. But I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to take it a step further. And I'm going to say maybe something a little crazy here, but effective communication is not enough. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you're just listening on Apple, I kind of pointed in to the camera like uh, some of those old school presidential movies that you've seen in the 80s and 90s, like The American President with Michael Douglas. What a good movie, but he always pointed, or, or Dave from the early 90s. What a great movie, pointed into the camera. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that rather uh, boldly because effective communication is not enough. You can be an effective communicator and still communicate at people, still speak at people, still lead at people. It's just the case. You know why? Because again, it's communication's dirty little secret. You turn up that unhealthy communication knob and all of a sudden you're talking louder. Your tone has changed. Your body language is more angry. You're more forceful and you think you're doing it to command the room, to be a powerful leader. And it's just not that because your inner world is not healthy. And so how it comes across is like people have to protect themselves, like their arms are up or like they're boxing and their, their fists are up trying to block your punches. There's a better way. The better way is to choose to communicate in healthy ways. Healthy, we, <laughs> we say it like this at Speak With People. Healthy communication is oxygen for your relationships and your leadership. Healthy communication is oxygen, just breathe, breathes life into them. And healthy communication creates a true connection uh, between sender and receiver. It, it brings a pure connection. You ever tried to hook in a USB-C into an Ethernet port? Yeah, it, it just doesn't work. You've got to have the right connectors, and that's what healthy communication does because connecting is everything. Everything. But we still, like I'm holding up my phone to the, uh, to the podcast listeners, uh, YouTube, you're seeing this. But in 2024, isn't it amazing that with how connected this world is, how many satellites there are, how, how many things our phone can do, we still have drop calls. We still, uh, we still lose calls. We're still, can you hear me? Can you hear me? How about now? How about now? How about now? That's what happens in communication. I mean, when we are not choosing healthy communication, we're, <laughs> we're experiencing those drop calls. I love this quote by Dr. John Maxwell. Everyone talks, everyone communicates, but few connect. If you've never read uh, Maxwell's great book, Everyone Communicates, but Few Connect, I would highly, I would highly, I'd highly recommend it. You can go to the communication skills library, speakwithpeople.com slash skills library, and you can get access to the free resource that Speak With People puts out where you can see the best books on communication, on leadership, uh, be best TED Talk videos, YouTube, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but Maxwell's book is listed there. You can go and get it. But here's the thing that's so tough for people to comprehend. Connecting is never about you. Uh, let me take you back in time. It's the late 90s, early 2000s. I'm a young leader. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my place in this world. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to connect the best. I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to connect the best with. And honestly, I'm trying to figure out how to be something. I'm in my early 20s and I got a, I got a giant dream and, and, and I want to, I want to just be able to do that. And I knew it was, I had to connect with people who were, you know, three, four, five steps further than me. So I started to connect with people. I, you know, back then <laughs> we really didn't email people. So I called people, I sent them letters, uh, email was just starting to come through for the normal person. So I started to email people. I'd run into people at a conference and I'd say, Hey, can we have 20 minutes to talk? And the reality is, is if I look back now, most of my connecting was purely about me. It was just about me. It was about who could I know, who could, I mean, and I, and I had this like nice little like uh, breath, breath of air when I would meet somebody who I thought was somebody, you know, an author, a presenter, and I thought, oh, they're going to sit down with me, you know. It's, it's connecting is about the other person and helping them succeed. It goes all the way back to Dale Carnegie's book in the early 1900s, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's not about you. If, if you get that through your head, 
it's amazing the success that you'll achieve so much quicker in life. So connecting is about other people. How can you help them succeed at the end of the day? So uh, I love this quote. A guy by the name of Alex Spencer wrote it. Success happens when you develop connections to people, build others' trust in you, and practice uh, consistently. You can only run a people business if you really, truly like people and allow them to like you too. I mean, that's powerful, right? Most of us are in the people business, yet we don't, we make it all about one people, one person. That's that's us, you know, me. Uh, we've got this disease called me-itis. I mean, you want to talk about a pandemic. I know we're post-COVID and you know, past pandemic and all that. But I mean, the real pandemic, I think, of 2024 and moving on is this disease called me-itis. I mean, we we are surrounded with me all the time. How can I build my platform? How can I get more traction? How How can I get more views? How can I get more people to notice me? How can I sell more books? How can I do this? And the reality at the end of the day, a healthy leader on the inside, they know that connecting is all about helping other people succeed. So I'm gonna go through uh, speak with people's healthy communication habits. These are the habits that will help build and deepen your connections and relationships to people, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your kids, whether it's your teammates, your boss, uh, potential clients, current clients, whatever it is. If you spend time, if you spend time diving deep into these practices, these habits, You put these tools, I'm trying to think of all the analogies I can use here. You put these tools in your communication skills toolbox, look out, because it is uh, is a powerful, powerful moment when you're able to dive deep into them and see what happens. Okay, first is this, you prioritize your entire health. Ah, wow, I start with a tough one. And when I do training seminars, I can sometimes see people's, you know, eyes roll because they're like, wait a minute, what, is, what does my health have to do with my communication skills? Well, here, here it is at the end of the day. <laughs> if your inner world is not healthy, then what comes out of your mouth most likely has a greater chance to not be healthy. So we want to make sure that we're healthy. And that's, I mean, that's so much why I speak with people exists. We, we just don't want you, you know, we just don't want to throw different communication stuff at you. We want you to to learn how to be a healthy, holistic leader from the inside out, all parts of you. So you prioritize each of those health areas, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, financial. They're prioritized. You have an accountability plan. When was the last time you created a wellness plan where you sat down, maybe with uh, you know you and your spouse or you and a loved one or someone close to you or your counselor, and you just said, I need to create a wellness plan because I'm just not doing well. Uh, when you, if, if you ever... Uh, take the step to buy uh, Speak With People's Speak Like a Leader course. This is the course that helps everyday leaders learn how to stand up in front of other people and communicate publicly with command, with conviction, with confidence, and in a captivating way. I mean, that's it's a tall order. But in that course, we teach you. I think there's nine videos, there's worksheets. We, we kind of teach you what we have called the pathway. This is a step-by-step guide to becoming a healthy and captivating communicator. But we teach you in there the importance of setting up uh, healthy morning routines. There's different worksheets to be able to figure out what's the best morning habits for you and the best habits that you know fill you up. This is my, uh, those of you who are watching online, you can see it. Those of you who are listening, I'm holding up my Speak With People mug. I love these mugs. They are handmade by an artist in Michigan. They're just they're just awesome. Hey friends, as you know, one of our core values to speak with people is to be obsessed with your success. We wanted to present with you a couple of options to help you succeed. I know you can go to Google. I know you can go to Amazon, but Speak With People has created an online ever growing library of the best resources that will help you grow as a leader or communicator. Go to speakwithpeople.com slash skills library and you can get access to this ever growing Google spreadsheet of all the best books, podcasts, YouTube videos, TED Talks that we can highly recommend for you to be able to grow in your communication and leadership. And in the morning, I fill this up, right? But throughout the day, as I drink it, it gets emptier and emptier and emptier. And that's what happens in our leadership. We wake up, we've got tons of life and energy. And throughout the day, we get hit, 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 hit. And we just drain, drain, drain. The more healthy habits you are filling into your inner world during the day, the better leader the healthier leader you are going to be. 
one of my favorite people on the planet, one of my best friends of 30 years, Dr. Tom Rundell, he says this, don't rob your future self. This is so powerful. Don't rob your future self. I've done this. I'm guilty of this through seasons of stress, of overeating, of letting sugar be my addiction, uh, trying to get through pain. I've, I've got a terrible back, and so in order to get through the pain, I weaken my mental thought, and I think, oh, the only thing that will you know, give me relief is sugar, and uh, it's just wrong. It's, it's absolutely wrong. When it comes to your emotional well-being, how are your emotions? Uh, when it comes to your mental well-being. So you prioritize your entire health. That's the first one. Uh, the second one is you control your emotions. Kind of piggybats right onto that. You value emotional intelligence. You understand your emotions. You've done the work to articulate them. And, and you make sure that they don't cause damage to others. Because your emotions can cause damage to others. The way that you speak to them, the way that you freeze them out with your you know, quiet body language. Uh, you, you watch out for triggers so you don't explode. Uh, those of you who are Ted Lasso fans, I mean, really, we got to be more of a Ted Lasso than a Roy Kent. More of a, a Ted Lasso than a Roy Kent. I, I love this quote by Roy Kent in the TV show. He says, does my face look like it's in the mood for shape-based jokes? He's speaking to Ted. Ted's trying to do a joke. And Roy's just like, does, does my face look like this? Uh, and then Ted says, there's two buttons I never like to hit. That's panic and snooze. So, you control your emotions, incredibly important. Third one, speaking with people. Empathy and compassion are essential to your leadership and communication. You understand that true connection comes through empathy. True connection comes through empathy. And so many of us, we think feeling, uh, we think being empathetic for someone is feeling sorry for them. Oh my goodness, it's so much more than just feeling sorry. Empathy is sensing other people's emotions. It's uh, in, it's imagining how someone feels. It's imagining what they're thinking. It's mirroring their feelings. It's identifying how a person is feeling. It's understanding another person's feelings. It's seeing things from another point of view. And really, it's listening to what others are saying and then feeling overwhelmed by other people's tragedy. And then that triggers compassion. And compassion is this twisting of your guts and feelings every morning for whatever reason, scrolling through the reels. I know I need to stop that. It's not a, a habit that is the best for me, but I scroll through the reels and I come across a million different uh, pet rescue videos. And it just rips out my, like my guts are twisted because I want to help. Uh, empathy is so important. The Development Dimensions International, DDI, they found, according to their studies and research, that empathy is the biggest single leadership skill needed today. Actually, according to Richard Wellens, Senior Vice President of DDI, he says being able to listen and respond with empathy is overwhelmingly the interaction skill that outshines all other skills. Whew, huge. Empathy and compassion are essential. Okay, the next one. Uh, your communication is clear and straightforward. Your communication is clear and straightforward. Transparency and honesty are the foundation of your communication. I mean, we live in a day and age, people can sniff out liars so quick. There's no beating around the bush. You're direct. Uh, and, and it's filled with warmth. When you're not filled with warmth and you're, you're direct with someone, you just push them away. It's like you build this wall in between them. And you build this wall. Marcus Buckingham, like I've already mentioned before, he said this, clarity is the preoccupation of the effective leader. If you do nothing else as a leader, be clear. Be clear. Dr. Brene Brown says, uh, clarity is kindness. Clarity is kindness. All right, the next one, you're a student of people and you're obsessed with helping them succeed. You're a student of people. You genuinely care for people and you want them to achieve their goals. You're continually learning uh, how to be others focused. Again, Sorry for the shameless plug, but in our, our Speak Like a Leader course, we give you the necessary steps to be obsessed with helping your audience and your clients succeed. Because if you, if you want to be a great public speaker, right now we're just talking about one-on-one -on -one interpersonal skills, but we'll talk about, for a second, we'll talk about public speaking skills. If you want to be a great public speaker, you've got to stop being obsessed with your own success and how well you do, and you've got to be obsessed with your audience. It's just, the, it's the same thing. It's the absolute same thing. Uh, John Maxwell said, Success begins with we, not me. No one person has all the answers. Just huge. Okay, the next one, you value stories. Uh, you value someone's story 
by learning and remembering it. You actively value someone's story and you take time to learn it, invest in it, and understand it. It's so incredibly important. This deepens your connection. When you, you're able to put pieces of their story together, you take the time to ask great questions about their story. If you've never read uh, Story Brand by Donald Miller, it is another book that is on our communication skills library. Again, go to speakwithpeople.com slash skills library. Get access to that library today. But you have to read this book. I mean, it's, it's so incredibly powerful. Donald Miller taps into what a story actually is, what it does. And so the reality is, uh, in my story, the stories that I tell, I don't want to be the hero of the story. I want to be the guide, and I want to make you the hero. It's just powerful. And if, if you're wanting to understand someone's story, you've got to ask them great questions. You've got to stop asking boring questions. Ask them questions like, can you tell me about the most important people in your life? Ooh. No, seriously, next time you go sit one-on-one with a client or you're going to sit one-on-one with somebody that you're mentoring or, or you want to mentor you, bring, bring a, a notepad, write these questions down and ask, what's your earliest memory? What are you proudest of? How'd you like to be remembered? Uh, if you could hold on to one memory forever, what would it be? Oh, powerful. A little shameless plug, if you... Listen to the Speak With People podcast back in the fall of 2023. We did, a, we did a whole series on story. We had one of the most prolific storytellers in the world today, Matthew Dix. It's actually episode 57. Uh, in, this, in the Speak With People library, the skills library, you can actually see the whole library of all the different podcasts and you can grab it. But Matthew Dix writes about how everyone's story is worthy. That's actually his book title, Story Worthy. And so we've got to get that mindset that everyone's story is important and you got to remember it. Okay, the next one, you recognize the significance of moments spent with people and you cherish their value. Uh, Technology, projects, your calendar, uh, other people, we got to put these away when we're with people and we just need to sit and be with them. No more stopping your watch, no more picking up your phone, no more looking at everybody, talking to everybody. Just give them your full uh, uh, attend, uh, you know, your full presence. We're in this responsiveness epidemic in 2024. Like we wait for everybody to respond. Are they going to, do they want to be with me? We ghost people. Just be with people, be with people. Okay. Next one. Uh, different opinions and thoughts are respected and heard. Ooh. We had someone comment recently on a video and they said, I love this video until the person started talking about religion. I just wish you would be more inclusive. I thought to myself, oh, I mean, I'm a person of faith, but I would sit across from someone who doesn't believe the same things I believe and I would listen to their perspective. I may not agree with them, but I would listen. I would respect them. Uh, Harper Lee said, you never really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. Powerful. Okay, the next one, you cultivate the habit of asking questions before forming an opinion and deciding what you believe. Ooh, you ask the questions first. You allocate time to inquire about their thoughts, their feelings, their perspective, to complement your opinions and thoughts. You just don't dive right into it. The next one, you use questions to draw out others. Uh, You draw, and you'll notice, we've talked about questions a lot. Questions are so incredibly important to the communication process. That's why in the How to Communicate video course, the seven-part mini video course, if you go to speakwithpeople.com slash how to communicate, buy this course. I mean, it is so affordable, and the reality is is that such a tiny investment is going to bring you a ton of of return in your relationship with your spouse, with your kids, with your loved ones, and with your teammates, your clients, your boss, the the executives above you. If you learn how to ask great questions, which in in the course we teach you some great questions to ask, you really will set yourself up above others when it comes to being a healthy communicator. Okay, no more boring questions. No more boring questions. Say it with me. No more asking your kids or asking somebody else, how was your day? Oh, ask great questions. Like, what was something significant that happened to you today? What was one of the best things one of your friends said to you? If, if you're in client relationships, a lot of times I'll coach and train financial advisors to ask questions like, tell me uh, how you want to describe yourself in five years. What can I do to help you get there? Uh, 
If you go to the communication skills library, there's a book listed called Cues by Vanessa Van Edwards. This will help you. This, this will be your textbook. Another one, your speaking is life-giving. We'd already talked about this in the beginning. I won't go into this more and more, but your words uplift and respect others. You refrain from gossip. You demonstrate transparency. You offer constructive criticism. You maintain an open and straightforward communication style. Uh, you use words to help people, help people. Speaking of people has a great acronym, H-E-L-P, words that are honest, encouraging, loving, pivotal. Again, in the How to Communicate uh, mini course, we go through those. Uh, I, I, I would just dive into those because they really will. Uh, last couple, speak with people, habits, practices. Listening takes precedence over your speaking. Listening. And, and be active. Uh, recently on the podcast, we interviewed two amazing leaders who wrote a book called Adaptive Listening. They say it's not enough to just listen actively. You've got to be adaptive. You've got to understand. You've got to use both of your listening styles. Go to the communication skills library again. See that. Uh, I'm going to give you just a couple more. Your nonverbal communication body language is in sync with your words. It's in sync and not like bye, bye, bye. Yeah, I know. I aged myself right there with the in sync reference. But you spend time cultivating your body language and your verbals so they're they're in unison with your words. Because if I if you're watching the YouTube, you see the power of this. If you're listening, you can imagine it. But if I say to someone, Yes, I'm doing fine, and my whole body is slumped over, my eyes look down, I can barely look at them, they're not gonna believe me. They're not gonna believe it at all. First and foremost, smile. Just smile. Smiling changes so much. My grandma Ball used to tell me uh, there are two types of people in this world, beautiful people and ugly people. <laughs> the only difference is beautiful people smile. That's it. Go into your body language. We talk a whole lot more about body language in the How to Communicate course. And then the last one, you communi your communication is vibrant with laughter and joy. I just don't understand why you would want to live a life without laughter. So I know for some people, laughter is, well, it's below me. It's so immature. I, I don't need to laugh. Oh, my goodness. What laughter does. What laughter does in your brain, all the chemicals it releases, the way that it fights off stress and anxiety, the way that it turns down the unhealthy meter in life. Look for ways to help people laugh. Again, you can go to speakwithpeople.com slash with or at. You can download this list. There's a checklist there to make sure you are doing this. Okay, the challenge, the challenge at the end of these two weeks is we really want to push you to communicate in healthy ways. Not just effective, but healthy ways. Healthy communication is speaking with people. Unhealthy communication is speaking at people, at people. So great reminder, here's the reality. The right words changes lives. The right words can launch someone. The right words can lift someone up. I'll leave you with this quote by Rachel Wolkin. I love this quote. It's so incredibly powerful. She says, be mindful when it comes to your words. A string of some that don't mean much to you may stick with someone for a lifetime. And here's the thing about words. Words only make up about seven to eight percent of our total communication. That's how powerful words are. So my friends, don't miss out on the free library, speakpeople.com slash skills library. It will give you access to an ever-growing Google spreadsheet filled with all the different resources that we recommend to grow as a communicator. Don't miss out on this seven-part mini course. It's uh, so crazy affordable, but it will teach you how to communicate in healthy ways. Cannot wait for the next series. You will not want to miss it, especially if you are a public speaker, especially if you want to speak in public, especially if you want to learn how to speak with confidence. Clarity is everything. Can't wait for you to tune in and we'll see you during.